It's a sacred place with the water there because in those days we did not come close up. We stayed further out, camped, songs were sung, connecting with the country and the spiritual keepers that kept this country. So that's a good place? Yes, it is. Well, that's amazing thing to have this continuity over time. It's been 70 years since Albert yes. passed away and it feels like he's living on here. We just hope we keep his legacy alive. I'd like to think Albert would be proud of how widely celebrated our First Nations artists are today. Tonight, I'm privileged to see the next generation's expression of culture at Pachama, the Festival of Light. And while tonight's artists might be using the latest technologies to paint the ranges and the skies, I have no doubt that I will be feeling the legacy of Albert Namajira. Rhoda Roberts is the curator of the festival. What does Albert mean to Aboriginal art makers today, his legacy. There's an enormous sense of pride and there's an enormous sense of who was this gentleman because he was a tradition bearer. But the fact that he gets put on a stamp, the fact that he is the first Aboriginal in this country to be given citizenship, that is huge. At the time he was celebrated, but very few people would have realised how he had to navigate daily life. He straddled two worlds. He had to navigate all that cultural obligation because that was his first world. But he also had to understand the red carpet and the champagne and then come back to being treated like a third-rate citizen in his own country. So if people put another lens on and go back and think of the politics of the time, the authority of control. I can't imagine the weight he was carrying. For someone to carry that almost single-handedly would have been a huge, huge thing to do. And that's what I find so remarkable about him, that he remained true to his country. He gave back to our communities. Very important, and I don't think he would have ever realised what a great hero he would have become.